sandals on the way I'm sliding up I won't join no gang cause I speak truth and I ain't slime enough I can't kill my brothers, we the same, it's just not adding up Esau he a killer, Gino side he keeps attracting us Most I say be fruitful, multiply so we be adding up Compare his seed to the sand of the sea, we deep so you can't add us up My people they got hair inside they heart, they wanna paint us up Grew up in the red zone, blood tears, I see red flags on us This world be killing me with lies the way they capping on me Like these publicans, they coons and seeing the way they taxing on me Prove what you say, the evidence, show me the facts, little homie Don't hold your tongue, just bring it out, what's on your mind, little brody? Riding on 4 Giados, bougie, how we sit, Moscato huh. Feast days of the Lord, champagne be rainy, poncho huh. Salvation of the Lord's people, come on, we need that pronto huh. Wisdom, yes, it bring riches, like we just won the lotto Keep huh. these commandments in the faith, my brother, that's the motto huh. Most how humble you quick, boy, if you think you macho It's real, we poor, but we rich in spirit Y'all got burritos? Y'all, lately, I've been vexed. The prosperity of the wicked, it, it's been getting to me, man. All these grievous bills, it's getting to the point to where we can't even bring the Bible out, let alone profess ourselves to be who we say we are, that the Lord said that we are. We get that Maccabees, uh, I think it's 1 Maccabees 6 and 6. You got it? Let me see if it's there. 2 Maccabees 6 and 6. It's all good, game. You got it. I think it's second match could be six and six. It's all good, game. Yep. Second match be chapter six, verse six. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts. Right? Bring it up. We sitting there, we got appointed feast days and Sabbaths. Our bosses won't even let us have those days off. They know you got to come to work. You got to finish your tasks or that's your ass. We tired of working for these people, man. Not only can we keep our feast days and our Sabbaths and our laws, what else? Or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. Right. They call us BHI. Do you know what BHI means? Bring it out, kid. We gonna help you out. BHI stands for Biblical Hebrew Israelite. That's right. Blessed Hebrew Israelite. That's right. Beautiful Hebrew Israelite. That's right. Bloodline Hebrew Israelite. That's right. Kid. We right now on these dang old ADLs. They say we a hate group, but you don't know what that H A T means. What it, it stands for hate the enemies. That's right, brother. We hate USA. That's right. USA stands for under Satan's agenda. United right. Satan's agenda. We hate this place, man. Let me get um I need you to give me a scripture, King. Give me the uh, Let me get the book of um uh, Figure it out. Second Peter chapter one verse twenty. When we deal with these Sunday church Christians, all they say is that's of your own interpretation. When we're bringing out the Bible, it's of our own interpretation. We're going to plain upon tables. Bring this out, King. In 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 20, and it reads, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is any private interpretation. Any scripture? It's not of our private interpretation. What if they just wake up 24 hours and say, you know what? I think this means what I say, and I'm going to just say it off my heart. I'm going to go off of the book of Second Opinions, chapter 666, verse 6. I'm not going to give scripture today. I'm going to give biblical literature. I'm going to tell you what I feel that it say, not exactly what it say verbatim from the Bible. But let's see what the Bible say. Second Timothy, chapter 2. Verse 15. Study and show thyself approved unto Yahweh. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Second Timothy chapter two, verse fifteen. Study to show thyself approved. Do what? Study to show, show thyself approved. Nah, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna write John three sixteen, and that's gonna be my ser That's gonna be my servant tomorrow. Thank you, Jesus. All you gotta do is just believe that the blood got you. Well, I'm gonna eat pork, but the blood got me. But we know in the Bible the Lord will kill you if you eat pork. Good. If you got pork on your fork, swine on your mind. 
when you're really supposed to have the beef through your teeth <laughs> and eat water, eat what's in the water that got fins and scales, not the other animals that's down beneath under the sea. the Lord, Yahweh, and read. And what? And read. Nah, just pick a scripture and then you take the, you take it with a grain of salt that is going to edify your, your people tomorrow. Read. None one of these shall fail. None of these shall fail if you just take the chance to look at the book. Take a look. It's in the book. Just read your Bible. All you got to do is read and Lord willing your soul succeed. But our people don't want to see. They don't, they don't want to succeed. They don't even want to read. All they want is just one scripture, and then they going to have their whole sermon gravitate off that one scripture. When I was in the Sunday church, the only scriptures that I know is they, it's the Christian um, biblical text. This they starter kid. Philippians 4.13, I could do all things with Christ that strengthens me. You even got Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. What's another one? John 3, 16. Romans 10 and 9. Romans 10 and 9. 1 John 2 and 2. And that's it. And then when we ask our people, y'all right, the Ten Commandments is the law. The three main laws that they know that's in the Bible is what you see in everyday life. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, and thou shalt not commit adultery. That's what they learned from the Sunday church from Pastor Porkchop. Deacon Hogbone's evangelist shrimp sandwich. This is what our people know. And that's just straight out of madness, man. Let me get um let me get um Psalms 89 and 34. And I need you to give me um Isaiah 41 and 21. Because they think that salvation is for everybody. All could be saved. One thing that they really that they make they that they make their mistakes on when it comes to John 3 16, what, King? why you don't go up to the context of who Christ is really talking to? This is two Jews talking about salvation for the Jews. That's why. They in the wrong conversation. It's like these Sunday church Christians all in the Kool-Aid and they don't know the flavor. <laughs> Catch up, Mustard. Edify them. <laughs> the song is the uh, 89 verse 34. My covenant will I not break. My covenant will I not what? Will I covenant not break. No, John 3.16. Will I not break. First John 2 and 2. Will I not break. Will he not break and what else? Nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. See that? He never altered the things that comes out of his lips. If this salvation for the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, ain't nothing going to change on that. That's tattooed. Everybody got a court date. And if... You, if your name not in the book of life, hey, I don't know what to tell you, partner. But no, let me get that uh, that uh, that Isaiah 41 and uh, 21. Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 21. Because when they come with us and they say that we a hate group, we Satanists and all that, well, prove us wrong. Let's go to work. Before you go there, let me get Job 6 and 24. Stay on that Isaiah, though. Let me get that Job 6 and 24. If what we preaching is hate, school is. Book of Job to the 6, verse 24. Teach me, and I will hold my tongue, and cause me to understand where I, I had erred. Let us know where we messed up at. Shut us down. They ain't shut us down yet. That's why we always be out here, Lord willing, every Friday and Saturday to tell the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans that you are the Hebrew Israelites. You got to repent and keep the commandments, because it's almost over with. We're about to get into the real NBA. No bondage again. <laughs> Isaiah 41 and verse 21. Produce your cause, save Yahweh. Produce your cause, save the Lord. We're the mouth of the Lord. All we speak is thus, save the Lord. We're not going to sit here and give you literature. We're going to give you Bible scripture so you can get the picture. Bring forth your strong reasons. Bring forth your strong reasons why, we, why you see us as a Satan group or a hate group. All we're doing is just telling you what the Lord says you're not supposed to do. And, and, and y'all want to sit here and say we Satanists? They're called Cassidy. Save the king of Jacob. Save the king of Jacob. Not save Kazak. Not save Mattathias. Not save Shashar. Save the Lord. Right. Let them bring them forth. And show us what shall happen. 
Let them shoot the former things, what they be, that we may be consider them and know the letter end of them. So let us know how it's going to end. Let us know that the rapture really going to happen. And we'll be like, you know what? You got it. Let me go play my 2K. Let me go ahead and eat some shrimp, crab, pork, and lobsters. Let me go ahead and go to the club. Oh, let me go play basketball today. Since y'all was right about everything. But they can never prove us wrong. They can never shut us down. So this is what the Lord said. Read on. For declare us things for to come. Shoot the things that are to come hereafter. That we may know that you are gods. Yea, do good or do evil. That we may be dismayed and behold it together. Behold, you are right. for nothing. Wait, 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 wait. Now this one, I ain't even gonna lie. The reason why we still here every Friday and Saturday is because we proven everybody wrong that the Sunday church is what? Behold, ye are for sucky. Ye are of nothing. Ye are of what? Ye are of nothing. Titty snakes? Ye are of nothing. Creflo Cash? Ye are of nothing. And your work of naught. And your work of what? And your work of naught. GOCC? And your work of naught. Seventh day of Venice? And your work of naught. Jehovah Wickedness? And your work of naught. Read? An abomination is he that chooses you. So it's an abomination for you to even be chose to be on the pews. It's an abomination for you to even pick up the Bible. Right? Let's see what Christ said about the Sunday church, Matthew 22 and 29. The message of the 22. Matthew 22, verse 29. Yahweh shall answer and said unto them, Ye do error, not knowing the scriptures. Ye do what? Ye do error, not knowing the scriptures. Right? Nor the power of God. Y'all err because y'all don't know the scriptures nor the power of God. That's why we shutting y'all down and we growing. Jeremiah 4 and 22. Get out! For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sonish children. And they have no understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. Our people don't even know how to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. They don't know the Lord. They don't know how to love the Lord. If people was keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, it would be a lot of babies. It wouldn't be no abortions. It wouldn't be no dang old um, respect my pronouns. All that wouldn't even exist here. It wouldn't be no murder. Everybody would be loving each other. It wouldn't be no baby mamas, no baby daddies. None of that exists. It'd be played out like jerry curls if everybody knew how to keep the law. If everybody knew how to love each other. It wouldn't be no hatred. Our sisters wouldn't be driving, wouldn't be dressing like they selling their body to the highest bidder, the highest drug dealer. 2535 sold to the man with the with the dang on scam pockets, the dang on credit card scamming everybody. Right? Let me get that. Romans 32, verse 7. Remember the days of old. We're, we're, what? Remember the days of old. Remember the days of old. They say that the Bible is the Old Testament, we're not supposed to keep it, but the Lord said, remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy fathers, and he will shoot thee. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. Right? We gotta go to our elders about matters of old. Who we are, where did we come from? What was our heritage? What was our culture? What food did we eat? Who are we in the Bible? If we're the children of God, who's the children of God in the Bible? Right? If we got to remember the days of old, what else do we got to remember? What happened to us? Bird ball, bring it out. 17. Deuteronomy 25 and 17. Bring it out. Remember, remember what Amalek did unto thee, by the way. Remember what? Remember what Amalek did unto thee, by the way. Coach Mayo crew? Remember what Amalek did unto thee, by the way. Small hat mafia on the west side? Remember what Amalek did unto thee, by the way, when you were come forth out of Egypt. Right? How he met thee, by the way, and smote the hindmost of thee, even all that were feeble behind thee. And when thou was faint and weary, and he feared not God. See that? 
They don't care about God, man. They had their hand in our captivity. Newsflash. They had their hand in our captivity and took on our heritage and said that Israel, the state, was established in 1948. Well, uh, that's, that's asinine. That's How do you become a state? How do you become a nation? When this is a bloodline heritage. This is a bloodline covenant. You don't just sit here and say, well, you know, we didn't conquer the black people. Let's become a nation. Let's take everything from them. They basically did a John Hocranus. Huron. Literally in a nutshell. Wow. They converts. You can't convert. You can't convert to something that you was never a part of. We ain't welcome you into the cookout. Who told you to hop over the damn fence and just say, oh, I'm going to get me a plate. I'm with y'all. <laughs> Verse 19. Therefore, it shall be when the Lord thy God hath given thee rest from all thy enemies round about. All right. Do you know who the Hebrew Israelites is, sis? Who are they? You don't know? I'm going to give you one Bible scripture. Let me get Deuteronomy 28 and 68. I'm about, to give, I'm about to give you a Bible scripture. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Do you know what Egypt means? What does it mean? Is that what? No, it means slavery. I'm going to give you a biblical definition of what it means. Okay, Deuteronomy, you get uh, Exodus 20 and 20. Okay, Exodus 20, verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So, Egypt means bondage, the house of slavery, right? Have you ever heard this saying, I'll be sweating like a Hebrew slave? Well, when you go to the bathroom, you look in the mirror, you're looking at a Hebrew Israelite. King James. Watch this, watch this. We, we done broke down Egypt, but you about to hear something. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 68. Now this verse is the reason why they don't want us to learn the Bible in school. The real history. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ship. With what? With ship. On the plane. With ship. In the car. With ship. Lord said we was going to go into slavery again with ships. How did we get here to America? And it's right there in the Bible. So if the Lord said that that was going to happen to the children of Israel, what would that make us? The children of what, though? Right, they ain't going to write. Hey, get a flyer real quick. Take a flyer, sister. Brother got a flyer? Take a flyer, sister. This is your heritage y'all got to grab hold to. Take heed to that. We got a school. We got everything. Y'all Hebrew Israelites will pin keep the commandments. All right? Y'all be safe. We love y'all. Red man. Let's get back to the word. He said what? I'm going to let you know right now. We called on the Bible. So if they not Bible-based, I'm trying to tell you. All right, let me get that uh, limitation spot. You, you still got that Deuteronomy, though? Oh, you at 19? Yeah, break out that 19. Deuteronomy 25, verse 19. Therefore, it shall be for the Lord thy God hath given thee rest from all thy enemies run about in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek. Shall do what? Shall blot out the remembrance of Amalek. What we gonna do to Juminati when we go home? Shall blot out the remembrance of Amalek. That thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under the heavens. From under the heavens. So after y'all build up my brother's mansions, including mine, after you handmade build my grill, because I love the barbecue, and I want it dripped in pure gold. That's right, bro. After that, in your thousand, in your 999th day, I'm beating you to your last to your last breath. <laughs> it's over. Y'all not gonna love my plantation. Cause that's plantation, I'm gonna have you work 22 hours a day, 
You gonna stay an hour away from me. You got 30 minutes to get home, handle what you gotta handle. Then you gotta bring your behind back 30 minutes back. You said African American? That's two white men, King. Can't be, can't come from two places. Africa is by this Roman general by the name of Scipio Africanus. He was a Roman general. He defeated Hannibal in the Second Punic War and conquered that land, Africa, and called it Africa. Then you got um, America Vespucci, was an Italian map maker. And he was a freak. And he named this place Africa. He put, named this place America. So you can't come from two white men. So you have to reiterate your question and what would be your answer now? What's your nationality? That's a beautiful answer. That's a beautiful answer. We're going to help you out. Deuteronomy 2868. Deuteronomy. Ready yet? Go to one and one. God. Deuteronomy chapter one, verse one. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. All uh who? -huh. Unto uh -huh. all Israel. Unto all Israel. Now this book is a, now this context of this book that I'm bringing out. He's talking to the Israelites. We're gonna find out who the Israelites are. Let me get um, Deuteronomy 28 and uh, verse 15. Bring it out, King. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. Bring it out. Bring it out. But it shall come to pass if they will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all His commandments and his statues, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Is a curse a good thing or a bad thing? It's a bad thing, right? All right. The Lord gave a fair warning to the children of Israel. If you don't listen, I'm going to jack you up. Let's find out the first beat down. Go to verse 16. Verse 16. Cursed shall I be in the city, and cursed shall I be in the field. Now, when you look at Detroit, you look at Seven Mile and Van Dyke, who's living good and who's living bad? Basically, we ain't even gonna worry about who's living good, who's living bad? You say who? Black people, right? Do you see any white people over here in the, in the hood? A little bit, right? But where are they mainly at? In the suburbs in the city, right? Right. In the suburbs of the city. Now, that's a lot of noise. I'm going to also bear with me real quick. I'm going to wait till that noise calm down. Now, when it say the work field, what do our people say when they go into work? They go into the plantation, right? Modern day slavery. Even in our ancestors, what did our ancestors do in the field back in the day? Take cotton, right? Exactly. So it was a generational curse. That's one of them. Now you're about to go and find another generational curse. Let me get verse 37. Deuteronomy 28, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment. A proverb. A proverb. We love chicken and watermelon. Hennis. Sports. Basketball. Another proverb. A black man is nothing known for going to jail or being dead. Right? Then you got one. You can raise a family in an elevator, but a black man can't. Now, that um, that by word, we was called nigger, we was called Negro, we was called African American. How the hell is we a hairstyle in the continent? And in a nutshell, why is our nationality constant, constantly changing as the generations go by? Why we not one generation? Why? Because that was a curse that the Lord said he was going to have on us. About to go to another one. 28 verse 46 and they shall be upon thee for a sign and a wonder now these curses are going to be on us for a sign and for a wonder how do you know that that's in georgia from the sign right and he said these these atrocities that your people that i was going to put on you and your family it was going to be for a sign and for a wonder 
Like, you remember DMX when he made that song, Lord, Give Me a Sign? Because he wanted to answer why the reason why his people go through so much. And in order and in order to identify the reason why we go through things the way we go through, is through the curses in Deuteronomy 28. That's how we find out where we are, where we're going, and where we come from. Upon thy seed forever. Upon thy seed forever. That's a generational curse. I know you probably got somewhere to go, so I'm gonna try to hit home. Let me go to um steady down. Let me go to 54. So the man that is among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil to the tongue. All praises to the Most High. That's the tradition of the battle. All right, brother, I want you to listen to this curse. To see if this black on black, black and brown problem. The man that very delicate. You heard that? All right, bring it back, King. So the man that's tender among you and very delicate. The man that's tender among you, very delicate. That's my twin. That's my woe. That's my bro. That's my baby, right? That's my brother. His eyes shall be evil towards the brother. That's black on black crimes. Who does that sound like? His eyes shall be evil toward his brother. Don't we fight over many streets, street corners, different high schools, bloods and crips? That sound like a black and brown problem, don't it? And toward the wife of his bosom. Domestic violence. And toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. Is your father in your life? Do that curse resonate to you? Bring that back up. And toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. And toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. This is a man evil eye towards his children not being there. So have you dealt with that curse? Your father passed away. I'm sorry to hear that. But you got family and friends that uh, went through that curse, that had single family homes. And I'm sorry to hear that about your father, man. Just know that he had rest and he had a good place. than down here while we got to go through all the bullshit and still see our people die to this day. You know what I'm saying? So your father's at rest. So if you continue to keep the law, statutes, and commandments, you letting this, you're not going to let his legacy die. You're giving him a good name. That's why we're here for you. The Lord moved you here for a reason. You feel me? Uh, let me get, I'm going to give you another curse. Uh, let me get 68. Look at Deuteronomy. Chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Do you know what Egypt means? I'm going to be quick with it. It means slavery and bondage. Our ancestors is in Egypt. Even when you look at the dollar bill, you see the you see the pyramid, right? Right now, when you look at M. George's, all these restaurants, you're looking at modern day pyramids made with brick. All right? Look at the back of the dollar bill. Bring the camera over here. You see that You see that right there, right? That's a pyramid. Ain't that pyramid made in bricks? But you see in this too, right? What does this mean? We're gonna break this down with the Bible. Let me get that Revelation uh, 11 and 8. 11, 11 and 18. I think that's what it is, 11 and 8. Let me get Revelation 11 and 8. Still look at that dollar bill though. Because we seen, he said we were going to go into Egypt again. The Israelites is in the Egypt with Pharaoh, right? Where Moses wanted his people freed from the Pharaoh. But it's a modern day Pharaoh that we was going to go to. We're going to break that, we're going to break that down. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. What is America known for? You know what sodomy is? Homosexuality. What is America known for? Homosexuality and slavery, right? Where also our Lord was crucified. 
And when it said where also our Lord was crucified, Christ's image was crucified. He was never identified as a white man. He was a black man. And he died an innocent black man. He went to jail like how we go to jail. In the Bible. He even stayed in the ghettos. Nazareth, that was the hood. You gotta imagine how nasty it was there. But he stayed there. And he went to the people that he knew that he had to save them. Right? Let me get that, uh, oh, you already, uh, got that, uh, problem six. We're about to give you the um, identification of what um, Egypt means. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 6. I have the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. What is Egypt? From the house of bondage. So what is Egypt? House of bondage. Yeah, no, you good, you good. The house of bondage, that's the name of Egypt, all right? So let me go to, uh, look at that 68. I'm not going to put too much on you, but you got to know what happened to your people and who you really are. Because you're not black. There's no country by the name of black. There's no heritage. There's no food called black. There's no language called black and eat. All right? Deuteronomy 28 verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Now, we just broke down what Egypt is. What is Egypt? House of bondage, right? Slavery. With ships. On a car. With ships. On a plane. With ships. How did we get here to America? And that's written in the Bible. Show it to me. Come close. We here. We your brothers, man. You see that right there? It said, with ships. Now continue to read on so he can see that we know. This. So he can know that we ain't lying. By the, by the way, world, I expect you to be. Thou shalt see it no more again. Have we seen our homeland again? Do we know our homeland? Read on. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men. Now it said we were going to be sold to our enemies. Who was we sold to? But who did the Lord say the white people were? And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. Now the Lord just said that the white man is our enemy. White people are our enemies. All lives don't matter when you read the Bible. All lives don't matter to the Lord. Only his children matter, right? So the Lord said that they're your enemies, and you, we know that we were sold to the white man. Who is the white man? Our enemy. Say it loud so they can see, so they can hear you on the camera. Who's the so-called white man? That's kind of loud. Yeah. Say it with your chest, brother. See that? Mm -hmm. You like when you hear your favorite song, and they bang and you know the lyrics to it? You say that loud, right? Say it loud who your enemies is. That's good. I'll take that. I'll take that. Right, brother. So we sold to our enemies for what? For bond men. Slave men. And bond women. Slave women. And no man shall buy you. Juneteenth. And no man shall buy you. Emancipation the proclamation. And no man shall buy you. Meaning no man will redeem us out of this captivity. Once we here, we stuck here. And nobody ever deemed us, gave us reparations or none of that. So I'm going to give you a couple of laws. Do you eat um, shrimp, crab, pork, and lobster? You don't eat none of that? You on your way, brother. Get that brother hand clap. You don't eat shrimp, crab, pork, and lobster for real? Oh, you do? Oh, you don't at all? Oh, okay, look, peep this. Did you know that that's biblical? You all, you almost there. Now I gotta give you the dress code because the Lord said we're not supposed to eat shrimp, crab, pork, and lobster. We're not supposed to eat none of that. So the fact that you don't eat that, you're on your way, brother. You're on your way. And when it comes to the beard and everything, you gotta grow it. If you can't, grow what you can. Don't cut your hair bald. Don't do the Michael Jordan, the Kobe Bryant, the, the Gilly the Kid. Don't do none of that. At all, brother. All right, brother? Don't Keep your head. Um, let me get that. Uh, let's get to the uh, dress code. Uh, numbers 1538. You know what these is? We're about to show you. Look at Numbers. Chapter 15, verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel. What's this, brother? Speak unto the children of Israel. Brother, if these curses that we went through, the Lord put on us, what does that make us? 
If we was brought here on the slave ship, what does that make us? Because that was put on the, the Hebrew Israelites. So if we was here on ships, if our ancestors was here on ships, and the Lord was talking to the children of Israel, and your spirit bear witness to the curses that happened to the children of Israel, what does that make you? What's say it loud, brother? Because we claim our hoods. We claim where we're from. Seven Mile, Van Dyke, we claim our hoods loud. Say it loud of your true nationality. Child of Israel. That's right, brother. That's right. You're an Israelite. Right, You're a child of God. You guys chosen. You his favorite type of people. We play basketball back. Ain't nobody out sport us. You look at the NBA, you can't even count off your hands of how many good white people. The GOAT debate is not going to have a white person in it. It's going to be between two brothers. If it be a GOAT debate on who the coldest white people, you can actually identify who they're going to be. It's between Dirk, um, Joker, and dang on Larry Bird. That's the only three white people that you'll probably have a GOAT debate between of who's the coldest. But when it comes to people that look like you and me, you can't even count off your fingers. Let me get that uh, numbers, the uh, 15 to 38 real quick. Look at numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel. What this brother is? Speak unto the children of Israel. Who are you, brother? That's right. And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations. Now that's plural, throughout their generations, meaning back then all the way up to now. So that's what you're seeing what brothers doing. They're keeping their generational laws and traditions. Right? What else? And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. Now, you know we on Seven Mile. There's a lot of Seven Mile bloods over here. That they don't play that. Well, you know what it's called, the, that crab-ish. But we're not gangbanging. We're trying to wake our people up from that. Because that ain't nothing but black-on-black -black crimes. So the Lord said, when you were a friend, you gotta have a ribbon of blue. You can have Carolina blue, you can have navy blue, any type of blue, as long as it's blue. Now you see brothers got many colors of fringes. Got black, got blue. Brother got gold. But they all got many colors of blue, from royal all the way up to dang on navy. You can even have Carolina blue, baby blue, it don't matter as long as it's blue. You feel me? So for the Lord, will you wear fringes? Will you wear these on your shirts? For the Lord. You say, yeah? For the Lord, will you wear these on the bottom of your shirt? All praise to the Most High. Now, the, the brothers get in the flyer. You know what the Sabbath day is, right? We're about to let you know that real quick, and then we'll let you, you know what I'm saying? See you on your way. Leviticus of the 23 and verse, I'm going to start at verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord, ye shall proclaim the holy convocations, even these are my feasts. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, a holy convocation. Now look, keep this. If I was to ask you, what's the seventh day of the week? You said Saturday? Sunday? Somebody Google us the um, seventh day. Check it out. See that? In a nutshell, we've been lied to, bro. We've been told that the seventh day is Sunday when Sunday really is the first day. So six days from Monday, all the way up to the uh, sixth day, then do what you gotta do. Do your work, right? You got a job, try to get even five days, work five days out of a week, but if you trying to get your bread, you can only do six days to get your money, do that. But on that seventh day, what? Seventh day, it's a Sabbath for rest, a holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. 
So on Saturday, don't do no work. From Sunday all the way to Friday, do your job. Do what you're supposed to do. Do your pleasure. You want to play the game, you want to play 2K, whatever, do what you got to do. But on that seventh day, it's supposed to be a Sabbath parade. We want you out here with us. That's right, brother. Exodus chapter 20, verse 10. But the, se for the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, and thou shalt do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger was in thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea is all there is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day in holiday. Blessed the seventh day in holiday. Hey, Zion. Google a day of how many people died. You about to find out because the Lord don't play. He made he made idle threats, but whoever broke the Sabbath day, they was gonna get laid down. They getting their water cut off. Let me get that that scripture. In case you needed more evidence that everything you love, of all the days of the week, Saturday is the day people are most likely to die. Saturday are what? Are the day that people are most likely to die. He's about to show it to you right here. Even this, a several study showed that you have a greater chance of dying on Christmas, the day after Christmas or New Year's Day than any other single day of the year. So Saturdays, even Christmas. Ho, 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 you gon' go. The Lord ain't playing, bro. It's up to you to make that decision. It's up to our people to make that decision. We don't got that much time left here. This place is about to go. It's about to be a wrap. So if you don't keep the Sabbath without, you know what I'm saying? I don't care if it's overtime and you trying to get them Jordans on the Saturday. Bump is not worth your life. Look at Exodus 31, verse 14. You shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is a holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. Shall what? Shall surely, surely be, be put, put to, to death. death. And that brother just showed you that Saturday, the seventh day, and that's one of the main days that people get put to death. Because they're not keeping it, they don't know what the hell they're doing. That's spiritual. Now, we're about to deal with the buying itself. Book of Nehemiah. Chapter 10, verse 31. And if the people of the land bring word of or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we will not buy of them on the Sabbath. Jordans? We will not buy of them on the Sabbath. Potato chips? We will not buy of them on the Sabbath. Juice? We will not buy of them on the Sabbath. Save your money till sundown. Let me get um, Genesis 1 and... Um is one and five or one and four. You about to see how 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 the days go. Genesis chapter one, verse four. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. The God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So the evening and the morning is the first day. Sundown is a new day, right? It's not twelve midnight. The person that's been in charge of telling us it's 12 midnight, Daniel 7:25. So when sundown hit on that Friday, it's the Sabbath. You got the, you got to you got from eight in the morning, five in the morning, all the way up to 8:30 or 9 o'clock before the sun is down. You do what you got to do, right? And you can't do no buying or selling till Saturday night. Now tonight is the big fight. You'll be good. You can buy whatever you want when the sun is down. All right? Now, no matter your ignorance, you bought today, right? That was a mistake. The Lord saw it, he winked at it. But on the Sabbath, on Saturdays, don't buy or sell until it's sundown. You got me? So for the Lord, you'll stop buying and selling on the Sabbath? All right. And there's no cooking on the Sabbath, too. Make you a sandwich. Get you some cereal. You know what I'm saying? Make you a grilled chicken salad. Then when sundown hit on that Saturday, go crazy. You get your cook on. That's it.
All right. All praises. So for the Lord, you going where are your friends? Just what you learned so far since you've been here. Right? You're a child of Israel. No cooking or buying on the Sabbath. You're not supposed to eat what? Uh-huh. 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 Shrimp strike report, okay. Do you got tattoos? Do you wear tattoos? Are you gonna get some tattoos? Brother already keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, man, without being taught. You an Israelite indeed, brother. So Lord willing, we see you up here, man. We coming to save our brothers and sisters because it's almost over with. This place about to go, bro. America's financial structure, the, its financial bone structure is basically osteoporosis. We're about to live in a cashless society. Pretty soon, we ain't even gonna be seeing none of these businesses open. Another bank just recently failed. More and more banks that you, that you would never imagine that have failed, they're gonna be shut down. So we're trying to save our people before all hell break loose. Lord willing, we'll see you again, King. So what's your nationality again before you go? Right, you Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Get that brother hand clap, man. Take heed to that flyer that you got, man. You hear me? All right, you be safe, man. What's your name? Tay? Oh, Jada? All right. Take this with you, too, okay? That's your book. All right, you be safe. I love you, man. Come y'all shout. Come y'all shout. Come y'all shout. Hey, Lord willing, that that brother, you know what I'm saying, that he grow, man. But with that, we out.